Grateful for everybody's presence tonight and thankful that we can be together tonight to celebrate the class of 2022. I love the, uh, the banner, the theme they've chosen for this year, More Than Conquerors. And I'm going to sing a couple songs. We're going to sing a, three courses that just have to do with being, uh, being strong in the strength of our Savior and the power that comes through serving the Lord. Let's sing that song first of all. You are my strength when I am weak. Let's sing. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue from sinners, the ransom from hell. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, we've got the power in the name of Jesus, we've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, we will not be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Greetings to each one of you here. If you are here tonight, it is because you are important to us or because we want your money. But honestly, it is because it is because many of you here that we have made it to this point. And for that, I want to say thank you. Thank you, parents, siblings, friends, family, classmates, and most of all, I want to thank God. Thank you for the positive impact you've had on my life and the lives of my fellow classmates. I was asked to sing a song tonight, and after giving it some thought, I decided to sing Precious Memories. Looking back at all the years of my school life, I have many fond memories. But what I found interesting was that the memories that stood out the most were those times when things were going wrong. I discovered that good memories are not dependent on good times. Good memories are made when we have a good attitude to the good times and the bad times. 
So I want to thank the high school that I've been a part of for all the memories that I've been able to make with you. Following my song, Wendell Note will be giving the commencement address. Following him, Hannah Jo Steinrock will be giving the salutatorian address. And after her, Hannah Ray Martin will give the valedictorian address. On behalf of my class, I want to thank each one of you for being here to celebrate this moment with us. Please enjoy the service. Precious memories, unseen angels sent from heaven to my soul. I don't know. How are you supposed to follow Johnny Cash on the stage? I don't know. <laughs> good job. Appreciated the song. Well, it's good to be here tonight with all of you and seniors celebrating with you. Enrique, you made it. Enrique comes to my church and appreciate him a lot. I've known him for a long time, and he's been in my Sunday school class a bunch of years and class of Bible study, so he's the one I know the best in the group. Hannah, you used to come to our church a long time ago. I remember when you were like this big. In fact, I have some pictures. Maybe I should send those to your parents <laughs> sometime. Um, cute pictures, very cute. But anyhow, the idea of their theme, more than conquerors, more than conquerors. A lot of times uh, in life, we think about conquering, taking over something, beating back the enemy, taking the ground back that was lost. But this is about being more than just someone who conquers. Romans 8, 37 says, 
Nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. If you look at the verses that precede that, it says, who, verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for they, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Um, those verses share some pretty ugly things that come up against us as God's people. Um, when we think about conquering, and this idea of being more than overcoming those bad things, um, Romans 12, 21 says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And I think that's the answer to being more than a conqueror. We don't just overcome evil, but we overcome evil with something better. We put something good in the place of something that was bad. Jesus talked about this. He said, when someone has a demon in them, and the demon's cast out, and the house is swept and clean. Later, the demon will return with a bunch of friends if that house isn't filled up with something else. That's the concept that Jesus brought to us. We shouldn't just seek to destroy the bad things. We should seek to bring the goodness of God into, into the areas of, of life that we clean up or in the areas of the world that we clean up. It's not just about getting rid of the bad, but putting something good in its place. So I have three simple steps for this. The first step is know who you're fighting against. For any success in conquering, we need, to, we need to have an idea who the enemy is. Sometimes in wars, people are taken out by fire from their own team because they're mistaken for the enemy. And I listened to a podcast about Lewis and Clark, and I think it was Lewis and another guy were out doing some reconnaissance, and they got separated and the other guy that was with Lewis ended up shooting Lewis in the backside because he thought he was a bear or thought he was an enemy, an Indian or Native American coming after him. And so sometimes uh, we're taken out by friendly fire if, if we don't identify who the enemy is. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of even, evil in the heavenly realms. First Peter 5 says, be alert. This is 1 Peter 5, 8. Be alert and sober of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Our fight and the ultimate one to conquer is not humans, but Satan. We have an enemy who is on the prowl wanting to take us out and take us down, wanting to destroy the good that is in us and wanting to, con wanting to corrupt and distort what God has designed in us and for us. An example of knowing what the enemy is. During the first attempt to build the Panama Canal by the French, this was in the 1880s, yellow fever and malaria were rampant. Over 20,000 men died. And the company that was funding this Panama Canal construction finally went bankrupt after six or seven years. About Fast forward about 20 25 years to 1904, the pro project was resurrected by the United States. By now, research had shown that it was mosquitoes that spread the sickness, malaria and yellow fever. In those earlier days, they thought it might be ants or some other things that were spreading malaria and yellow fever. And so a man named William Crawford Gorgas was commissioned to control these creatures, mosquitoes. And of course, this was a big challenge in a tropical place like Panama. So they drained ponds and swamps. They cut down the tall grass that was nearby and the places where they were working, where they were staying. And if the place couldn't be drained, they'd poison it with oil and, and other poisons. And I wondered, how would, the, how would the EPA look at that today? But in 1904, it didn't matter so much. And it worked. The death rate in that area dropped from 1904, 1905, 1906. It was 11.5 people per thousand but by 1909, it was down to 1.2 people per thousand. They knew the enemy they were fighting, and they went, went out against the mosquitoes and got the mosquitoes vanquished, or a lot of them vanquished, and they were able to have healthy workers, and the project of the Panama Canal continued, and they were able to complete that um, in the mid-19-teens. 
Uh, in the same way, we must know who we are fighting. We must know who we're fighting and not get sidetracked by other things. The second point, so the first point is know who you're fighting. The second point, know, know you're in it alongside of other Christians. Know that you're in it, this battle, alongside other Christians. In 1 Peter 5, 8, which I read earlier in verse 9, it says, resist, stand firm in faith, talking about the devil prowling around, resist him, stand firm in the faith, because you know that your family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. The fight is real and it's common. You're not alone in this fight of trying to be more than a conqueror. Um, I think about the Old Testament where Elisha had this tremendous victory on Mount Carmel. And, Je and Jezebel said, I'm going to get him. I'm going to kill him. He's going to be dead, just like my prophets. Tomorrow morning, he's going to be dead. And Elijah ran away and he hid. And he cried out to God, I'm alone. Nobody else is with me. And that's one of Satan's tricks that he uses against us. He says, you're alone in the fight. Nobody else is experiencing this. You're weird that you're struggling. This is not normal. Young men, young ladies, there's going to be a struggle. If you want to conquer and you want to overcome and be more than an overcomer, there's going to be a struggle. And it's not just you. It's every Christian out there that's trying to do the right thing that's going to face struggles and temptations. You're not weird. You're not alone in this. Christians around the world struggle with us. One of the other things about this, knowing that you're not in it alone, rarely do we conquer alone. Ephesians 6, 1 and 2 says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you may also be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. All of us has weaknesses and will fall at times. We need one another to help, help us through the tough times and to help restore us to the path we should be on. Most experienced warriors had someone who helped them learn. Anybody recognize these three names? Phil Jackson, Butch Harmon, and Mike Mancia. Mancius. Anybody recognize those names? Nobody? How about these names? Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, and LeBron James. Yeah, yeah. Well, those first three names are the coaches that walked alongside of these men. Phil Jackson was Michael Jordan's coach from 19... Um, but, uh, in the 80s up into our early 90s to the late 90s for nine years. Butch Harmon was Tiger Woods coach for 11 years. And Mike Mac Mancius was LeBron James' personal trainer for over 19 years. The guys that are famous, you know, but the coaches in the background that helped them to success, you don't even know. And that's how it is in our Christian walk. The things that we face, we need to stand up and walk with one another and help each other. You might not get the glory for someone standing firm and doing what's right, but it's what the body of believers is built for. Um, in the New Testament, there's a couple short books called First and Second Timothy. It's a letter from an older man, Paul, to Timothy, a young pastor, encouraging, giving instructions, walking alongside of him through those letters. Today, we still read those letters and get good instruction and good input from those letters. But that's just a biblical example of this idea of walking alongside of someone. One other piece with this, we're in it together. Um, make sure you thank the people who help you out. If you look in the New Testament again, you'll notice in Paul's writings, he says, I thank God for you speaking to the different churches he's writing to. And at the end of the book of Romans, he has a list of a whole bunch of names of people saying, hey, give my greetings to, say hello to these, these friends of mine. I appreciate them a lot. Um, and even lists some special things about some of these people. We need to do that as a body of believers. If we're going to overcome, and as we overcome, thank the people who help us in that. I have the privilege of being part of several accountability groups. We fight together. We bring our struggles and we grow together. So this point that I'm making right now is we're in it together. You're not, you're in it alongside of other Christians. And the third point I have, this is the final one, so you guys will graduate soon. No to never give up. God is for us. In the beginning of, or a few verses before verse 37 that 
more than overcomers or more than conquerors. Um, there's verse 31 and 32, 33, 34 uh, say this. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, for us all, how will we, he not also, along with us, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Christ is at God's right hand right now as we speak, interceding for us, crying out on our behalf, um, asking God to help us and aid us. We, ser we serve a God who is for us. Our hope is not in the ups and downs of the world around us. And you guys experienced some of that. For two years of your schooling, there was a bunch of messed up stuff because of COVID. There was ups and downs, but the God we serve is consistent. COVID doesn't take away the consistency of God. Our ups and downs, our personal struggles don't take away the consistency of God and his love for us. God is there in the good times and the bad times. Um, he is a God who has called us not only to be a conqueror, but an overcomer, someone who overcomes evil with good. If I mentioned the verse Romans 12, 21, that's kind of my personal verse for my life. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Replacing that, that is, which is bad, that which we're conquering with something that's better. Um, a couple of the verses around Romans 12, 21 say, verse 19, but do not avenge yourself, beloved, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If, if he is thirsty, give him a drink. And verse 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That portion of Scripture is talking about forgiveness. Sometimes we get stuck with the enemy of unforgiveness in our life. And we personally are conquered. Um, Satan has a foothold because we're not offering forgiveness to those that have wronged us. That verses that I read talked about feeding your enemies, taking care of, taking care of uh, the people that are against you, like in the words of Christ. We live in a world where people want to conquer each other, but don't want to help each other out or offer forgiveness to one another. Our world is just happy to see those they don't like suffering and getting what they deserve or saying something like, it serves them right, or other statements like this. But in the words of Martin Luther King, hate can't cast out hate. Only love can do that. And that's, that's not his words. Those are taken from the concepts that Christ taught. Loving your enemies, doing good to those that hate you and persecute you. I think the life and the words of Christ sum it up as good as it can be. Love your enemies. Do good to those that despitefully use you. Use you. Decimating something isn't enough. Replacing it with what's right and good is of paramount importance. Just as Jesus spoke of not only cleaning out the house, but filling it with something good so that the demons don't come back, we want to be like Nehemiah and rebuilding the ruins, bringing the good things back to life. Most of all, being like Christ, who took what was broken and rebuilt it for you and I and brought us into sonship and daughtership of God Almighty. So I want you graduates to win in this idea of being more than a conqueror. And so to win, we got to know who you're fighting. Remember that you're in it alongside other Christians and that we never give up because God is for us. Number one, know who you're fighting for W. I, in it alongside other Christians. N, never give up. God is for us. I'll leave you with those words. Hello, everyone. We are all very glad each one of you could come and celebrate with us on this very exciting occasion of our lives. I could get up here and say about two words and sum up many of the salutatorian 
or I guess graduation speeches I've heard in my life. So I'll try to keep my gratitude brief. Teachers, parents, friends, family, pastors, and anyone else who's been involved in our schooling or personal development, I would like to say thank you to each one of you. Thank you for your godly influence and all the encouragement and help that you've been to all of us. Um, especially my parents and all those pep talks from Mr. Horst. I know he's not here, but they were really influential to my life. Um, I had a few weeks to prepare this. Mr. Mr. Gaiman told me like two weeks ago that I was like second best or something like that. Um, and so I was thinking of various things I could talk about. And I'm like, so this morning I realized that all of the things that I was thinking of talking about were very selfish things to talk about because it was basically telling you guys how to avoid my pet peeves. And I didn't really want to talk about that. So I came up with something a little better this morning. <laughs> um, I would like to encourage you all to surrender to God because I have spent a lot of time in my life fighting with him, saying, God, I don't want to give up my will. This is what I want to do. And usually he wins because, well, he's all powerful, all knowing, you know, all that stuff. And I don't want to fight that because that's way bigger and way, way more than me. Um, so I realized recently that I'm at an extremely pivotal point in my life. And I want to use these next few years of my life to honor God and to serve him because if I fight him, I ain't going to go anywhere. I'm just going to go backwards and end up where I don't want to be at the end of my life. And so I think it's also safe for me to say that every one of us is at a pivotal point in life. Every moment we could choose God or we could choose the world and self and sin. So Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that you and your offspring may live. This is pretty serious because you have to realize that God is calling heaven and earth to witness this. Usually to prove something happened, we only need one or two witnesses. But for this, he's calling heaven and earth. This is not a small choice. So choose life today. Thank you. Hello everyone. I wanted to start first off by thanking all of you for coming uh, to celebrate with us as we graduate from high school. I want to thank the teachers all from kindergarten up to high school just for the hard work and time that you put into teaching each of us. And I also want to thank my parents for being my biggest fans and encouragers as I go went through school. And I want to thank all of the parents of us seniors and school students for caring enough to send us to a Christian school like Fairview. Now, when I tell public school kids that I go to a private Christian school, they usually have all kinds of questions. They usually say, oh, everyone must be rich and spoiled kids, or your schoolwork must be way more advanced. Well, I've done ACE all my life. Like, the answers are fill in the blank, and they have comic strips in the workbooks. Anyway, I'm not here to roast ACE. What I'm saying is I think what sets Fairview apart from other schools is the spiritual aspect of it. We're really blessed to be able to go to a school filled with staff and students that are bound together by a love for God. We have teachers who really care about what we're going through and they want us to grow spiritually. 
We have classmates who will readily encourage us and pray for us. And every day we have the chance to learn more about God and worship. And I know that's not an opportunity that everyone has at the school they go to. We have events like camping trips and convention where we can grow closer to God and to each other. I can think of several events where either it's, you know, a rally at convention or sharing time around the campfire during our camping trips where I just felt like God was really near and I just felt like I could feel him working as he brought us closer to him and to each other. And those were really amazing experiences for me. And it's something I try not to take for granted. I mean, in a way, we have it easy. We're so surrounded by godly teaching and influence. And when we leave this place and go out into the real world, that will probably change. So I want to remind us seniors and all the underclassmen to hold on to everything we learned here at school. Hold on to the academic things, but more importantly, hold on to the spiritual things that you learn. As you go out into the real world, keep Christ number one so that we don't get caught up in all the distractions of life and get pulled off course. And to you parents, I know it seems like we're becoming more independent and we may even be leaving home in a couple in a couple months or years, but you need to stay involved in our lives. Please keep encouraging and advising us as we try to follow God and live for him. We need you in our lives. And underclassmen, don't take this stage of life for granted. Plug yourself into school and invest in good relationships while you can with your classmates. Take the um, opportunities you're given here to grow in your faith and your walk with God. Your high school career might be some of the hardest years of your life, but that's why it's the perfect time to strengthen your relationship with God and make it personal. Make the most of these years because they'll play a huge role in who you become later in life. And to you eighth graders who are coming up, if that sounds intimidating, don't worry. High school will be a blast. I just want to end by thanking the high school for all the fun memories we've made this year. And I want to thank my senior class for being such a fun group of people to go through high school with. And again, I want to thank you all for coming to support us as we graduate. We have a sweet assurance of a blessed promised land when the Lord returns to carry us away. Greater joy is waiting when he takes us by the hand and we hear the Father turn to us and say, Well done, well done, my faithful child, well done. You have finally made it home. You have kept the faith, the crown of life you won. Well done, my faithful child, well done. We'll join along with millions as we enter heaven's gate, where the book of life is opened up and read. And we will all be listening as God reads aloud each name. Oh, what triumph when he turns and finally says, Well done, well done, my faithful child, well done. You have finally made it home. You have kept the faith, the crown of life you won. Well done, my faithful child, well done. Well done, well done, my faithful child, well done. You have finally made it home. You kept the faith, kept the, faith the crown of life you won. Well done, my faithful child, well done. You kept the faith, the faith, the crown of life you won. Well done, well done, well done, my feeble child. Well done, well done, well done, well done. Well done.
done my future well done. And yes, class of 2022, well done. You've made it. And I hope that God will say well done to you as well at the end of your life when your race is run. Thinking about this class, I have two words that describe them, characteristics of them. You guys ready for this? It's diversity and perseverance, okay? Your class with many varied interests, many varied talents, and you had to work very hard to get to where you are here. We have athletic gifts, leadership abilities, musical talents, writing abilities, a love of reading, culinary talent, critical thinking skills, and the cowboy country flair, which I see coming through real strong in those blue jeans tonight. Many of you worked long, hard hours to finish assignments and to do your best on them. School was sometimes the last thing you felt like doing. Amen. Please, Dawson, give me an amen. But you persevered. All of you did. And you made it to the finish line. Um, do you guys remember that first quarter uh, 2,500 PCL report you had to do? That's just a distant memory now, isn't it? Uh, you've moved on from that. And you're going to go on to bigger and better things. So I congratulate you on a job well done, right? I am so proud of this class. I'm so proud of the accomplishments of each one. And it was a privilege to be a part of your journey. You guys were the first class in high school. When I came in as a new teacher, you were freshmen. And so I feel like I've been with you for all four years of your high school life and got to know you quite well. Something about each one of you, a little bit about each one that's unique. And this is in no particular order. So I'm going to start with Enrique. Enrique, I feel like I've seen growth in your life academically, uh, spiritually. I feel like I've seen tenacity. You completed those long PCO reports, those computer assignments. You're a man of discipline in your diet and your exercise. And Mr. Fox and I are trying to learn from that. You learned to enjoy reading in the past two years, and even the subject of English became one of your favorites. Okay, maybe not. Maybe I'm lying on that one. <laughs> For each one of you, I bought you a book, one that I enjoy, and I tried to match the books I like and love with the interests that you have. And so, Enrique, the book I have on your table back there tonight is the classic Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Hannah Ray, you have perfect handwriting. Microsoft Word has nothing on you. You do your work carefully. You prepared and studied diligently. Valedictorian was well-deserved. Excellent job. You served well in student council this year, and you were a quizzer for four or five years, four years or so, so that took a lot of time. Nicely done. You appreciate classic literature, Anne of Green Gables and others, and so at your request and on Emily's advice, I bought you Persuasion by Jane Austen. Ziana is the best cookie baker in the class, although Blake is a close second. <laughs> Ziana, you are artistic and creative with the sketches in your desk. And you have worked long, hard hours as well to get to this point. You have a lot of determination. I feel like I've seen you mature a lot over the past four years. And you're definitely not the same person I remember as a freshman. You appreciate your sneakers. You know your kicks. And so I bought you 1,000 sneakers, pictures and history of the world's greatest kicks. For Gabriel, I thought of talented uh, academically, musically. You're a leader. I appreciated, I really appreciated your heart's desire to learn over the last two years, even sometimes when it was difficult or maybe it wasn't that exciting. Uh, you know, chemistry isn't always the most, doesn't just draw you in all the time, but you put yourself into it. And a lot of times in class, I felt like you were soaking it in. Now, maybe you're just being a good fake, but congratulations. I mean, Hollywood should, you know, use your talents, but you, maybe you fooled me. But I felt like you really wanted to learn you enjoy a good discussion, and I'm going to miss that. I feel like you're organized, you're neat, and you served really well as our student council president this year. And so I bought for you the book, The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. I read it this year, one of my favorites. Hannah Joe, I'm going to miss the Steinrich Farm updates. You know, secretly I was keeping tabs on Pastor Ted this whole time, and he didn't know it. 
but that was fun hearing what he was doing on the farm. Nicely done, salutatorian, good work. Academic ability was never a question with you. You're unafraid to voice your opinion and you're an avid reader. And I think you did quizzing for two or three years, two years, good job. And so for you, I bought the complete set. It's a long set. The complete set of the immortal Sherlock Holmes mysteries by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Blake, I think of a star athlete, thousand point scorer, almost, next week, right? MVP of the Pocono tournament, good job. I call him the human greyhound. The man can run endlessly. Blake had to work hard at school as well. Blake, you earned all your grades. Uh, you served well on student council this year and you persisted through the difficult assignments. I, when I think of you, I also think of conscientious and fun loving. So I bought you my favorite comic book, The Essential Calvin and Hobbes Collection by Bill Watterson. Dawson, you're unafraid, you're unashamed, you have strong convictions, you're a critical thinker, you're a debater, you're a redneck. I say that you're a Western cowboy trapped on the East Coast. And you have a high pain tolerance, except when it comes to Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> I've seen the man with blood dripping down his face, and he's still smiling and having fun. But I've seen him reduced to tears in front of a, a computer. <laughs> Dawson, you're my favorite. You're my all-time favorite defensive FCS basketball player. I'm really going to miss seeing you play defense next year. And so I bought you a cowboy book by my dad's favorite Western author, Ben K. Green, and it's called Horse Trading. Again, I'm so proud of each one of you and what you've accomplished, and I look forward to seeing how God will use you. Love God, love people. I'm going to pray for you, and then we're going to move forward with the presentation of diplomas with Mr. King. Lord, thank you for this class of 2022. Thank you for the tenacity, the perseverance, the diversity among them. Lord, I pray that they will be people who love you and who love those around them, who make a difference in the world, that take the evil out and replace it with good. And Father, I just ask you would lead them and guide them, especially in these next couple years. They're making big decisions, choices. Help them to listen to you and to your voice. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, seniors, I'm happy to break the news to you that the only thing between you and graduation now is uh, me. So um, I'll take as long as I want, but no, we'll move along quickly. But uh, Caleb, thank you for those kind words. Mr. Gaiman, appreciate that. I agree. Wonderful class. Many good times. You know what? No more research papers in my writing class. No more Excel spreadsheets. We're all done. Okay. And uh Mark Twain has some of my favorite quotes, but uh, he has one about education. He says, uh, he who grabs a cat by the tail will be more educated than any other person I know. All right. And so, you know, education is kind of like we talk about what life is like. We try to prepare you. But there comes a time when there's time to take on life, grab it by the tail and uh, see what happens. And uh, that's where you're at. I'm excited for you. And uh, like was already mentioned, my prayer is. You know, all the education in the world is pointless if uh, you get to the end of your life and uh, you end up in the wrong place for eternity. And so my prayer is that at the end of your lives, you can stand before God and God can say, well done. So I'm very happy to announce you've completed all the requirements uh, of Fairview Christian School and the state of Pennsylvania, and you are ready for graduation. So without further ado, Dawson Cool Arntz. Enrique Figuera Jr.
Blake Justin Fox. Zayana Jalen Gonzalez. Gabriel Ezra Lapp. <laughs> Hannah Rochelle Martin. <laughs> and last but not least, Hannah Jo Steinruck. Okay, parents, take a minute or two for a picture over here, and uh, in just a minute or so, Mr. Shirk will come lead a pair with the, uh, lead a prayer with the parents. Um, parents can come up and surround, stand close to your senior. We'll lead you in a dedication prayer, followed by a song by the high school choir, and that will be the end of our program this evening. So, Mr. Shirk, when you're ready. Okay, congratulations, seniors. This is an exciting evening. I don't know if you guys can remember back to Christmas time, but I wrote a short poem for each of the high schoolers. And a line in the poem, I don't know if you remember, but it said, Your education is important, and I recognize that, but not as important as the place you'll spend eternity at. And so I trust that as you finish up school, your minds and your hearts have been prepared for the exciting journey that lies ahead. You're closing one chapter of your life. You're opening up a brand new chapter. And there's a lot of unknowns, but it's exciting. And I'm proud of you guys. All right. At this time, I would like to invite all the parents of our graduates who are here this evening to come forward for a prayer of blessing I have asked Mr. Ted Steinruck, father of Hannah Joe, and Mr. Dan Lapp, father of Gabriel Lapp, to pray, and following Daniel's prayer, I will close. Okay, let us bow for prayer. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful evening. We thank you for this opportunity of standing here together around these young people. Lord, we thank you tonight for your grace and your love and your mercy. And most of all tonight, we thank you for the gift of your precious son, Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And we thank you that in him, we can have our sins forgiven. We can have a purpose for our lives today. And in him, we can have a sure and secure eternity. So we thank you tonight for that. Thank you for Fairview Christian School. Thank you for the education they provide for the young people who go there. Thank you for the spiritual instruction they receive from your word. Thank you for the staff who are committed and dedicated to you and desiring to see spiritual growth in the lives of the students. Pray that you'll continue to bless the staff and give them wisdom, strength, and courage to do what they do each day. I want to lift these young people up to you this evening. Father, I pray that you will direct them and guide them into their future. As they think about what you might have for them, I pray that they would place their lives 
in your hands, that they would recognize themselves as redeemed people who belong to God, and that they would go forth to make a difference in this world. Lord, the world needs love, and the world needs truth. The world needs to see people who are committed to Jesus Christ. So I pray for these young people that they would go forth in the name of Jesus to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, and that they would bring you into whatever setting they find themselves. So we dedicate them to you, Father, and each one of us here tonight, I pray that each of us would dedicate ourselves to you, knowing that life without you has no hope or meaning. And we just thank you that we can serve you and you fill our lives with hope and meaning as we do that. So continue to bless this evening. I pray, Lord, that each one of us will glorify you and honor you in all that we do, all that we say, and all that we think. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. God, we come to you this evening and we're grateful for this opportunity to be here and to be part of this program. We just want to, as parents, lift our children to you tonight and we want to ask for your strength to go with them as they go from here, as they go on with their lives and they end this phase of school and learning and just pray that you would give them the empowerment to be influencers, to be changers in their circles and their, in our world today. We know that our society needs you. We all need you, God, and we just want to ask for your strength in each of their lives as they go from here, that they could impact the world that they are living in for good and for your kingdom, that your kingdom could grow and that their lives and that the people that they come in touch with would be influenced for you and for the good. We just ask you to bless them, give them strength and courage to live their lives for your glory and for your honor. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. God, we come to you tonight with grateful hearts. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for healthy bodies and healthy minds, the ability to think and to comprehend. Tonight, we celebrate with these seniors. I thank you for their lives. And God, tonight, my prayer is that your hand of guidance that has brought them to this point would continue to lead and guide them as they walk out these doors and begin a new chapter in life. Father, may they let your word be a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their path. Give them wisdom and discernment to know and recognize the steps that you want them to take to bring all their honor, all the honor and glory back to you. God, we're so thankful, most of all, for Jesus Christ and the plan of salvation and the hope that we have through him. We pray all of this in his name. Amen. At this time, high school can come forward. We're going to sing a song that... Uh, there's two words in this song that I, I want to highlight, and it was, uh, I was thinking back in the Old Testament when, when it was asked, when, when uh, it was asked, what, what do we, who, when Moses was asked, uh, who do we, who should we say sent him? And he said, God responded by saying, tell them I am, I am, that my name is I am that I am. And there is a, a phrase in this song, which I think is a great response as God's people, that we continue to tell the world that he is. And so I love this song. It's kind of, it starts out kind of negative, a lot of questions in it. Um, but at the end, there's no question that, that our Savior, the I am, he is, he is worthy. Part of the bittersweetness of this evening is watching some of these singers move on. I mean, some of these guys have and, and you ladies have done a, just four years of pouring themselves into choir. And so one more time, guys, let's sing a song to the glory of God. Stop the light from getting through. 
Okay, thank you choir for that wonderful song. Thank you all again to all of you for coming and for whatever part you play in each of the graduates' lives. Um, it's a team effort, and so um, I'm excited to see where these young men and young women will go in life. Uh, feel free to stay as long as you want. There's an ice cream machine back there, some coffee, a light snack, help yourself to that. Um, take your time for pictures. Um, the graduates will be at their tables, especially at the beginning here. So take some time, um, walk around, chat with them, whatever you want to do. Thanks again for coming. Uh, we'll close with a prayer for the snack and you are dismissed. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this evening. Thank you for each of these graduates and, uh, for the part they play, uh, in your kingdom and in the world. And I just pray a blessing on them as they go from here. Thank you so much for the ladies who have worked hard to provide a good snack for us. And I pray a blessing on our evening and uh, on each person here as they go out from here. God, help us to do and say um, and live our lives in a way that honors and glorifies you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks again for coming. <laughs>